Welcome. Today, we are talking about flywheels. I put a new flywheel on my car and I had to choose between the heavy Porsche flywheel, which on my scale weighed about 26 pounds, and the lighter uh, sport racing performance aluminum flywheel that they claim weighs about 13.75 pounds. I don't have one, so I couldn't weigh that. It's a significant weight difference, and there are pros and cons to each. To really explore the pros and cons, we've got to get kind of technical and geek out on some maths, which of course is awesome for me, but might scare some people. So the short version of it is, use the Porsche flywheel if it's a daily driver, use the lightweight aluminum flywheel if it's a track car exclusively or mostly exclusively and maybe just occasionally driven on the street. If you really want more answers and more details about horsepower and performance and harmonic balancing and all that other good stuff, watch on. I'll start with the benefits of the lightened flywheel. And uh, basically, it all comes down to inertia. Inertia is how difficult it is to get something moving. Lighter objects generally have less inertia, meaning it's easier to get them moving. This is common sense in your everyday life. It's a lot easier to push a Hot Wheels car than it is to push a semi-truck. <clears throat> now, it's just really about moving, it, accelerating it. So both flywheels are designed to spin with the engine. The lightweight flywheel will spin faster. So if the engine is at idle, say, it will spin up to 7,000 RPM in less time. It will resist spinning up a little bit less. Whereas the original Porsche flywheel has more inertia and it is harder for the engine to spin it up to speed. And the engine will actually use a little bit more horsepower spinning it up to speed. Now once they're up at speed, it doesn't really matter. They're both the same. But that accelerating process, your engine is actually putting power into speeding up the flywheel and everything else that turns. So we're going to start with rotational inertia. These are both disks, so they both have the same formula for rotational inertia. Don't worry too much about what that is. The key here is that the Porsche flywheel has about twice the rotational inertia that the lightened flywheel does, which means it takes about twice as much effort to spin the Porsche flywheel up as it does to spin the lightweight aluminum flywheel up to the same speed. So this one resists rotation quite a lot. So once we have the inertia mapped out in our equations, the next step is to calculate angular acceleration. Now angular acceleration is basically just how quickly you can speed up the spinning of a disc or a wheel or anything like that. These calculations here are just to demonstrate that the Porsche flywheel will speed up slower than the lightweight flywheel. Now, these numbers don't really mean anything. This is if all the torque of the engine were applied directly to the flywheel and nothing else. So it's not a realistic example. The numbers aren't realistic and they're really just spinning up the flywheel with it out, without it engaged. But say, you had the engine in neutral, neutral and you were revving it, uh, this demonstrates that the Porsche flywheel would slow the revving of the engine. <clears throat> Basically, this follows the results of the inertia calculations and shows that it takes almost twice as long to spin up the Porsche flywheel as it does the lightweight flywheel. Now, in reality, the flywheels are only a small portion of what you're spooling up. So these numbers do not mean that the car is going to be half as fast or something ridiculous like that. It's just an example of how the Porsche flywheel takes a little bit longer to spin up uh, because it has greater inertia. 
All right, finally for the thing that everyone cares about, and this is horsepower and performance. What we can do here is we can calculate the kinetic energy in a flywheel. So we can take the Porsche flywheel and we can calculate the kinetic energy it has spinning at idle. And if it's spinning at 7,000 RPM, it turns out it has about 322 joules of energy. When it's spinning at 7,000 RPM, it has about 32,000 joules of kinetic energy. So to speed the Porsche flywheel up from around idle to about 7,000 RPM, it takes 31,000 joules of energy. Now, if you look at the lightened flywheel example, you have uh, the same calculation, only in this case, the flywheel only has 164 joules of energy when it's spinning at 7,000 RPM, and it only has about 16,000 joules of energy when it's spinning at 7,000 RPM. Again, about half the energy, which means that it takes about half the energy to spin it up to the same speed. So when we subtract the amount of energy that it takes for the Porsche flywheel to spin at 7,000 RPM to the amount of energy that it takes for the lightened flywheel to spin at 7,000 RPM, we see that it takes about 15,000 joules of extra energy to spin up the heavier flywheel. All right, great. Now, to figure out what that might mean as far as horsepower, we've got to figure out the time in which it spins up. <clears throat> if you spin up your engine from idle to 7,000 RPM very slowly, the horsepower is not that significant. If you do it faster, it takes more horsepower. So let's say that you could go from idle to 7,000 RPM in two seconds. So I'm thinking this is when the engine is engaged. Say you start the car off the line in first at idle and you step on it, you floor it and you hit 7,000 RPM in two seconds. Roughly realistic, probably. Maybe a little bit optimistic, honestly. I think it'd be a little bit longer than that. But say you can go off the line from idle to 7,000 RPM in just two seconds. If you could, that means in just two seconds you have to make up for 15,000 joules of energy. And that translates roughly to about 7,000 joules per second. 7,000 joules per second is, can be easily translated into horsepower. And when you do that, you find that it's about 10 horsepower, which is a big advantage. Now, obviously this is an idealized mathematical situation. And in real world applications, it's probably not going to be the equivalent of 10 horsepower to spool this heavier flywheel up. And it's also worth noting that this is the best case scenario. If you're only accelerating the flywheel from say 4,000 RPM to 7,000 RPM, it's gonna be a lot less horsepower to do that because you're starting at a higher RPM. There are very few situations in reality where you're gonna start at idle at 700 RPM and spool all the way up to 7,000 RPM. So you're really never gonna see that big benefit of ton horsepower. Um, all the same, it does show that under certain circumstances, the power that goes into spooling the heavier Porsche flywheel is significant. And when you look at this math, you might wonder why anyone would choose the heavier Porsche flywheel over the lightweight aluminum one. So what we'll go into next is why Porsche chose such a heavy dual mass flywheel over the lightweight aluminum one.